And topping the news this Friday night is this question. The question, why? Why did a Rochester teen allegedly and suddenly turn on his family and is now accused of killing four of them with an axe? We'll hear from stunned friends. We'll also reveal more details about a university vice president's questionable travel expenses. And live from Calgary, a 6-3 victory for Team USA. They keep their metal hopes alive. Uh, and high atop the Canadian Rockies, we will tell you all about the Olympic impact on wildlife. It's all coming to you next via New Star 5, live from Calgary. Ever since your post office invented express mail overnight delivery, others have tried to copy our eagle. But it's not so easy. Because express mail has overnight reliability that's close to perfect, the most convenient locations, and prices as low as $10.75. Most others charge you about twice that. So if you want a combination of low prices, convenience, and reliability no one can imitate, use the original express mail service from your post office. Kellogg's Corn Flakes taste like what morning should taste like. There's something about the taste. It's fresh, it's clean, it's a good way to start your day. The satisfaction. It hits the spot. I have a spot that only Kellogg's Corn Flakes will cover. The simplicity. You pour the Kellogg's Corn Flakes, put some milk on it, some fresh fruit, you got a perfect breakfast. That make Kellogg's Corn Flakes part of a breakfast people feel special about. Oh, what a way to start the day. Corn Flakes from Kellogg's. What more could you want from a cereal? America, there's no doubt about it. You sure have a thing about keeping your cars clean on the outside. Well, now there's Fino One Detergent Gasoline that'll help keep your car running clean where it really counts, on the inside. Fino One keeps your fuel injectors and carburetors running clean. Come on, America, keep it running clean. And Fino, you got a friend. You're watching KSTP-TV, Minnesota's News Channel 5. Live from Minnesota's News Channel, KSTP Channel 5. Stan Turner, Ruth Spencer, Dave Dahl, and Mark Curtis bring you the Eyewitness News Update. Good evening, everyone. We have a lot of news to pass your way tonight, including our report from Calgary, plus more on the controversial travel spending by a university vice president. But first off tonight, we want to bring you up to date on the shocking murders in Rochester, Minnesota. Four members of one family murdered with an axe, and a 16-year-old boy, a member of that family, is in jail tonight, charged with four counts of first-degree murder. The bodies of Bernard Brom, his wife Paulette, daughter Diane, and son Rick were found in this suburban Rochester home. They were each killed apparently with an axe. In custody tonight is one of Bernard Brom's other sons, David, now 16. But you see him in this picture taken four years ago. Police say he told a friend earlier this week he wanted to kill his parents and that yesterday he is said to have told someone else that he had done that. He was captured this morning near the Rochester Post Office. Friends say that until recently, David Brahms seemed like a normal high school sophomore. But he reported trouble with his dad over a tape that he'd bought, and he decided to wear his hair in a punk spike style. Today, Lou Harvin found a community stunned by this sudden tragedy. People in this city of 67,000 are finding it hard to believe that multiple murders would happen here the last time 15 years ago. It's also hard for David Brahms' classmates at Lord's High. Some of them today went over to the county jail to present letters of support to the sophomore, described as a student who wanted to be a writer, one who was not afraid to speak his mind. Some of the people in our class, just or in the whole school, they don't we can't get, understand that. they're not so open, and they were intimidated when they saw how open he was towards everyone. Lord High School principal Mike Leahy says the school never encountered any problems with Brom or his family. He's still trying to figure out why it happened. It scares me because it's happening close to us here. This is our town. And uh, it happened to a family that I knew. This church photograph taken two years ago shows a seemingly happy family. Betty Stenrude says all of this is unreal. She lives in Rochester and attended a party with David's mother last year. It's very sad. I think about the poor grand, uh, grandparents in a situation like this, what they must be going through. Some of the residents we talked with today say they'll be following upcoming trials involving this case very closely. They say not at all for curiosity's sake, but to figure out, if at all possible, ways to prevent such tragedies from happening again.
In Rochester, Lou Harvin, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Tomorrow, the Hennepin County Medical Examiner hopes to learn more about a bizarre death, one in which a body went through a trash compactor and ended up in a dumpster. Residents of the Cedar Square West Apartments noticed blood in the hallways and on the chute where they normally throw their trash. Through here, the body apparently slid into the basement dumpster. Tomorrow's autopsy will help the medical examiner figure out whether this was homicide or suicide. In El Paso, Texas, three people have died in the fiery crash of a small plane. It plowed into the parking lot of this shopping mall after the pilot reported problems with the landing gear. The pilot and two passengers died. The twin-engine plane barely missed traffic on a busy interstate highway as it tried to return to the El Paso airport shortly after takeoff. University of Minnesota President Kenneth Keller tells Eyewitness News that travel expenditures he authorized for a top university vice president are, quote, getting up there and must come to an end. Keller was responding to a Five Inside investigative report last night detailing how university provost Roger Benjamin's flights to Pittsburgh to visit his family have cost the U of M nearly $15,000. Those trips were paid for with so-called discretionary funds. Tonight, our Five Inside reporter Tom Garrison has more. Last night, we told you how U of M Vice President Dr. Roger Benjamin has been allowed since August of 1986 to take trips nearly every two weeks to Pittsburgh at university expense. Benjamin's wife and children live there. The trips, he says, were authorized in an unwritten guarantee negotiated when he accepted the U of M job. University President Ken Keller confirms that arrangement, but said he had no idea travel costs would amount to nearly $15,000 for what was supposed to be Benjamin's transition here from Pittsburgh. My expectation was that it would have been six or eight months. More recently, uh, when we've discussed the matter, I've said that, Roger, I think we have to reach a closure point on, on this as, as an agreement because it's carried on a little longer than I would have thought it, uh, it would. University officials agreed on a June 1988 cutoff of the Pittsburgh flights, and Keller calls the current expenditures appropriate, but towards the upper end. We showed him U of M documents which say the president's discretionary funds were used to pay for Vice President Benjamin and three of his children to fly round trip to Minneapolis just after Christmas. Other records show the vice president's own discretionary fund paid for an earlier trip by the children. Keller says it's all part of an effort to recruit the vice president's wife, who is an art history professor in Pittsburgh. When you have uh, both uh, a professional uh, uh, wife and a professional husband, uh, you're sometimes uh, into situations that need to be treated in a special way. Now, I don't think as a regular thing we ought to be involved in providing transportation for uh, the children. Vice President Benjamin was not in the office today. He's in Pittsburgh until Monday. But when reached by phone, he told us in light of the university's promises, he has, quote, acted properly, and that the children's trips to Minneapolis were to see if the family could, quote, agree to be recruited to Minneapolis. The university policy on discretionary funds says only that they are to, quote, support outreach on behalf of the university. No changes in the policy are contemplated. President Keller told Five Inside that perhaps in the future the full compensation agreements for all university personnel should be written down. But he says when you're dealing with budgets of millions of dollars, it's hard to remember to be just as concerned about $15,000 in travel expenses. At the U of M, Tom Garrison, Five Inside. The Presidential Roadshow stopped at the World Theater in downtown St. Paul tonight. Five of the six men running for the right to be the Democratic Party nominee tackled the issues and each other in debate. Massachusetts Governor Michael Dukakis, Senator Paul Simon, Congressman Richard Gephardt, the Reverend Jesse Jackson, and former Senator Gary Hart worked to appeal to voters just days before the Minnesota caucuses. Almost a thousand reporters, dignitaries, and citizens filled the theater to listen to the candidates. Reporter Kevin Berger has the story of two of those people in the audience tonight, a pair of young men who are getting an education in political science. Okay, what is at 17, Skip Mason is too young to attend his precinct caucus. So is his best friend Dave Moan. But these high school seniors are not too young to help others who will attend. I'm precinct three. Yeah. To earn school credit, they volunteer at the state DFL office, fielding calls on caucus locations and gaining insight into how grassroots politics work. Before that, we learned all about the political system in school, but this is more a demonstration of what goes on, actually. People think that you can't really change the system at all. But I think you can by, by participating in politics. I think it's actually every person's duty to, to do so. 
Dave and Skip are doing their duty. They got tickets to the debates and arrived at the World Theater to find out more about the men who want to be president. And I hope I can be a president who does that. If you feel more involved if you've actually seen them in the flesh. I'm really excited, looking forward to uh, seeing what the people have to say about, well, who could be my future president. And that's pretty important, I think. Both boys went into the debate feeling uncommitted. By the end, Dave leaned toward Paul Simon. I don't know, I think Simon still had the, like, most, like, approval tonight. And he seemed to have the, like, better plans for the future. Skip arrived at a judgment on how politicians work. Uh, I watched last night's debate uh, from Texas, and uh, they're saying many of the same things in the exact same phrases tonight. By November, both Dave and Skip will be old enough to vote. And tonight, here at the World Theater, they got an impression of the man they may be casting their first ballots for. But perhaps more importantly, they got a close-up view of how our political process works. Kevin Berger, Channel 5 Eyewitness News, St. Paul. By the way, a Republican debate scheduled for Sunday here is off as counseled when only two candidates said they'd show up here. Still to come, Dr. Breen continues his series on AIDS a bit later. But next on the update, we'll take you north to Calgary for more of our Olympic coverage, including a report on one facility built into the Canadian Rockies and the questions surrounding it. Introducing a small sedan made the Mazda way. The new Mazda 323 SE has a bunch of technical sophistication like fuel injection, a roomy interior, lots of standard features, all backed by the best warranty in its class. You've got to check out this Mazda 323. It's the best value in a small sedan. It also has the solid feel and performance of a road car. This is the Mazda way. See your Mazda dealer in Minnetonka, White Bear, St. Paul, Richfield, and Brooklyn Center. Wicks Furniture is giving away love seats, free love seats. When you buy one of these lovely sofas for just $6.99.98, your choice of comfortable country style, easy living casual, or elegant traditional, Wicks will give you the matching $599 love seat free. And no payments or finance charges for 90 days when you use or open a Wicks charge. Unexpected quality, spectacular savings. Wicks, surprisingly Wicks. Island is having a Moonlight Madness sale with big savings, but it's only for a few short hours. With traffic backed up, I'm getting a jump on everyone. Whoa. <laughs> Get this hot point super capacity heavy duty automatic washer for just $238, Friday and Saturday only, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. <laughs> Highland Superstore's Moonlight Madness sale. When you're driving for the gold, you go all out. And right now, your Lincoln Mercury dealers celebrate that same spirit with their Drive for the Gold event. An all-out effort to win your business with up to $1,000 customer cash on select models. The aerodynamic Mercury Sable. The sleek Mercury Cougar. The sporty Mercury Topaz. And other great values. Drive for the gold. See your Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Here we go now over the satellite because our crews in Calgary are ready with more of the most extensive local coverage of the 1988 Winter Olympics. They're working hard, but they're having fun, too. Let's yeah. take you now live via News Star to Western Canada with Mark Curtis and Wendy Lubavitch. You folks, all of you up there, doing a great job. Yes. We're proud of well, you. Well, thank you, Stan. Thank We're you. having a good time, too, in addition to working hard. And it is a great night here in Calgary, a great night for the U.S. hockey team. Oh, they played a great game. They skated well tonight. You know, we were talking at 6 o'clock just about how important tonight's game against Nor Norway would be. With a win, the U.S. could keep their medal hopes alive. If they lost, they'd be out of the running. Turned out to be another great night for Cloquet's Corey Millen. Third period, U.S. up 5-3. to three. Tony Granato puts it on Millen's stick. He scores to make it 6-3. Corey had a pair tonight as the U.S. beats Norway 6-3, to three, a big win. And now they need another one Sunday against the West Germans. More on hockey a little bit later in the show. Plus, day one, if you can believe this, of the twin spring training. Oh, that sounds great. Spring training. Well, uh, the downhill skiing venue at uh, Mount Allen is considered to be a world-class facility, but it is also a very controversial facility up here in, Can in Calgary. It's built entirely by the Alberta government at a price tag of $25 million. And as reporter Catherine Smith and photographer Rich Rumpy tell us, there are some who question whether this will become an Olympic legacy or a colossal mistake. 
Ask some skiers, and they'll tell you Nikiska is a world-class ski hill. It's perfect for racing. It's really beautiful. Maybe not for the public, but for racers, they'll love it. Talk to others, and they say Nikiska is a hill made only for racers. Much of the snow base is artificial, and the icy conditions are tough for recreational skiers. Man-made snow is really hard, and um, I don't know, I'd prefer skiing some nice, soft, fluffy stuff myself. So far, that's been the legacy of Nikiska, a place that people either love or hate. It's not just the skiing conditions that have stirred the debate, it's where and how the hill was built. I think it's controversial because of the environment, concern of sheep and so forth. It's uh, controversial because of the, the way it was built and because there's so many people looking at it. Ten years ago, there was no development here at Mount Allen, and it hasn't come without some controversy. Some people say building Nikiska was a colossal mistake because it sits in the middle of a Chinook mountain range where it doesn't get as much snow as other areas, and temperatures can rise by as much as 40 degrees in just a few hours. Because of those conditions, it's always been an ideal wintering spot for local wildlife, and some people say now those animals have been driven out. We do know that there has been some damage done. Mountain sheep have vacated certain areas. Elk have changed in their uh, spatial behavior. We don't know what happened to the bears. Local environmentalists say most of the damage was done building the Kiska, but they fear even more harm will come with the Olympic crowds. What we anticipate is that there will be some smart Alex that will want to have a better view of the Olympics and not pay for it. And they can do it. They can crawl up the backside of that mountain and they can sit. But if they do crawl up the backside, it goes straight to the mountain into sheep habitat. And these animals are spooky. Nikiska is a Cree Indian word. It means to meet, to come together. Thousands of visitors are doing just that during the games here at Mount Allen. But some people are asking the question, at what cost? From the 1988 Winter Games, I'm Catherine Smith for Channel 5 Eyewitness News. Thank you, Catherine. And Stan, as you know, Nikiska is being billed this year as one of the windiest places all around, and I'm hoping to get up there sometime this weekend. All right. Thank you very much, Wendy. And Mark, too, we'll be back to you a little bit later. On to other matters right now, though. The impact of the disease AIDS is felt by more people than you might think. And not just the AIDS victims, but maybe even those of you who think that you can't get the disease. Dr. Michael Breen explains next on the update. Sunday evening after 8, you'll meet a woman who gives new meaning to temptation. Is it you? Oui, c'est moi. You're listening to a costly transmission problem. Now, here's what a $40 problem sounds like. Sound the same, don't they? And not just to you and me, to train mechanics, too. That's one reason Amco checks out your transmission nine ways to Sunday. Fact is, half of the cars serviced by Amco dealers don't need a new transmission. Take your car to Amco now. What they tell you might sound awfully good. Amco, double A, MCO. Dodge Dakota 4x4. When you consider that it comes loaded with the best truck warranty on or off the road, more available payload than any competitive compact 4x4 in the country, and a fuel-injected V6 engine, S10 and Ranger charge extra for, it's easy to see. Only one size 4x4 has it all. It's gotta be the mid-sized Dodge Dakota. Save up to $2,400 with cash back and prospector package discounts on selected trucks in stock. Tomorrow's the biggest sale day of the year, so I'm practicing getting up early for Slumberland's one day. Starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. sale. That's the name. Starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. sale. Get there by 8 a.m. for first dibs on some of the lowest prices on mattresses from $49. Sleep sofas as low as $3.99. Lazy Boy chairs from $1.79. Plus, while they last, this beautiful $39 brass plant stand for only 7 bucks. Slumberland's one day. Starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. sale. <laughs> Starts tomorrow at 8 a.m. This is not the time for women to stop worrying about AIDS. Now, that's what this man told a House hearing in Washington. U.S. Surgeon General Everett Koop says that recent articles, like the one in Cosmopolitan, wrongly minimize the AIDS threat to heterosexual women. Although homosexual and IV drug activity are the routes by which most cases are transmitted, it is just not true that there is no danger from normal vaginal intercourse. 
And of course, you don't have to be a victim of AIDS to feel its effects. That's what Dr. Breen's been telling us all this week, and tonight he wraps up his special assignment report. Right? Ruth, Stan, AIDS could affect any of us the next time we go to a hospital. If you go to a hospital with a fever, a cough, a rash, any number of conditions, your doctor might decide to test you for the AIDS virus. In fact, your doctor could very likely test you without your knowledge. The problem is, if your test is positive, your name will be passed on. And if that information should ever become public, your life might never be the same. It, it's like living in a twilight zone. I'm, I'm treated in some, by some people as I'm already dead. That's how Michael Peterson describes having a positive blood test for AIDS, a test made public because of publicity surrounding a lawsuit. As a result, Mike says he's received death threats, been denied housing, and he says it's almost impossible to find a job. I can either lie, and then later, perhaps, if someone finds out, be fired for fraudulent employment, being fraudulently employed. Or I can tell the truth and uh, watch the door silently close. Mike's case shows just how devastating it can be if the world finds out you've got a positive blood test for AIDS. Yet despite the consequences, that test is often done without a patient's knowledge. There's still a very helter-skelter approach to this uh, topic, indicating to me a lack of consensus in the need for very specific uniform guidelines. It's going on even in Minnesota, though? Even in Minnesota, even, even today. Dr. Henry did a study that showed only 10% of hospitals will first get your consent, then give you proper counseling when testing for AIDS. Why is it important to know you're being tested? Because if that test is positive, by law, your name has to be reported here to the state health department. Officials here insist that's as far as your name will go. Well, the name is kept uh, by the health department in a locked file. It's protected by state law. We've had a very good record of protecting that data, even from challenge in the legal courtroom. But critics worry that as the AIDS epidemic grows worse, there'll be more pressure to release those names. The AIDS test has become so sensitive, more and more hospitals like Health East have adopted a new policy for doing it. No patient here gets that test unless he or she has first signed this consent form. But according to Dr. Henry, hospital programs like this one at Health East are the exception, not the rule. So the question is, next time you're a hospital patient, how can you make sure someone doesn't do an AIDS test on you without first getting your consent? One piece of advice, know your doctor. The closer you are to your doctor, the more likely he or she will tell you before doing the test. Second, Dr. Henry says that if you're really concerned about confidentiality, it is possible to get the test on your own under a false name. Here at the Red Door and some other clinics, people commonly don't give their true names. But that guarantees someone's anonymity? Correct. I mean, that's the word that, you know, is difficult for me to say, but um, it does guarantee that their uh, situation remains anonymous. Now, Dr. Henry says a false name is acceptable only because it's better than not getting tested at all. The health department opposes giving a false name, saying it makes it more difficult to follow and control this disease. As for Michael Peterson, he's now unemployed, deep in debt, and he thinks no one should be getting tested, should give his or her own name. And Ruth, Stan, this is a debate that is bound to continue as issues yes, of confidentiality certainly. become more and more important. Mike, I'm curious, do we know now at this time how many people in Minnesota carry the AIDS virus? Estimates are that about 30,000 Minnesotans now carry the AIDS virus. Most important, only about one in ten of those people actually know that they're infected. So we're talking about enormous numbers of people out there who will have the virus and have no idea that they're, they're harboring it. And it's growing by the year, isn't it? It's doubling every 10 months. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Up next, David Dahl is here with the Five First Forecast for the weekend. All right, we'll do that in a bit later. Let's take a little break, shall we? A break into sunny Florida where the local heroes are going back to work. There they are. Hi, I'm Tom Krebsbach, president of a brand new Midway Hyundai. Our show floor is empty right now, but on February 20th, you're going to see this car, the Hyundai Excel, the hottest selling import in America. Hyundai has challenged us to sell over 150 new cars this month. 
We're opening February 20th, so come in and see how much car value you can get for as little as $56.50. We're ready to set new Hyundai sales records starting Saturday, February 20th. See the car that makes sense at the dealer that makes sense, the brand new Midway Hyundai. So how are we gonna deal with a deficit? Nobody's told you. No other candidate will stand up and say, I'm gonna do this. Now what we ought to do is to have a spending freeze. But what it really means is that say 1989, we don't spend any more money than we spent in 1988. And then you're gonna keep interest rates down. Then you're gonna keep inflation rates down. Then you're gonna find more jobs for more people of all ages. So the deficit's public enemy number one. Dole for president. I'm so happy today. What you need from a radio station changes depending on when it is, where you're headed, or what you're doing. And through the different times of your day, and the different places you have to stay, there's one radio station to turn to every step of the way. KS95 FM, the number one music station under the sun, is 95 and sunny all day long. Save three ways at Towsley Ford and Towsley Subaru. It's a gigantic red, white, and blue tag sale through this Monday only. You'll find big discounts on every red tag car and truck. Bigger discounts on all white tag vehicles. Our biggest discounts on every blue tag vehicle. Blue tag Festivas and Subaru Justies are reduced to $55.88. $55.88 for a brand new car. Over a thousand vehicles tagged. Every car and truck in stock. Follow the searchlight till 10 every night at Towsley Ford and Towsley Subaru. White Bear Lake. Well, well, Dave, was your mom recognized when she went to the grocery store today? No, she wore dark glasses. That was just perfect. You know, <laughs> nobody recognized her. She no, was I great actually, on TV last right. night. She was on last night, one of our very special weather spotters. <sighs> mom doll. Mom, mom doll. You know, I couldn't get mom tonight, but I did get the next best thing. I got Mark <laughs> and Wendy with me uh, to talk a little bit about their nice weather. Now, we saw them earlier on the earlier newscast in just uh, sweaters. Now, you've gotten a little bit of a coat on, but... Mark, I know that you wanted to be a weatherman. <laughs> or at least Always. You, yeah, okay. What would you have described today? You can call today? me Brother Doll. <laughs> How would you have described today then, Mark? I would say it was gorgeous, Dave. There was high pressure moving in from the Rockies. It collided with a low right over our apartment building, and we just wound up with a beautiful day. <laughs> Excellent. How, how, Wendy, how does 55 sound for tomorrow? What are you going to wear tomorrow with 55 degrees? That's what we're uh, probably expecting up there in Calgary tomorrow. This sounds perfect, Dave. <laughs> you know, the only problem that we're expecting, we're expecting to see some higher winds tomorrow. And uh, could that affect some of the events tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, that could be a problem out at Nakiska, as you know, where a lot of the races already have had to be canceled. But uh, we've got our own high winds here. Yeah, they're going to run the women's downhill up there tomorrow. Also bobsledding, which could also be affected by the weather, Dave. Okay, enjoy the 55. I wish I could join you, but I'm going to stay here and enjoy our cooler weather. We're, we've got a cool front that's sliding in. That's going to bring the temperatures down already. They're sliding into the 20s right now as we speak. The five first forecast for tonight then does have partly cloudy, breezy, and colder for tonight. Temperatures dropping down to low to mid-teens, 20 to 30 miles per hour winds will gradually diminish late tonight. By the time you wake up tomorrow morning, have a start right at 16 degrees. Quite a bit cooler than we've been used to the last couple of days. Mostly clear skies, though. Then in the afternoon, thanks to the clear skies, we're going to have quite a bit of sunshine and cooler. High temperatures 18 to 22 for the afternoon. Northwest winds at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Outside, first we're going to take a look at Calgary once again. Their temperature is still at 41 degrees with partly cloudy skies. And as Mark said, high, thin cloud cover. Here in the Twin Cities, though, we do have clouds, and those are cl gradually breaking up. 27 for the temp. The dew point now at 17, 66%. For the relative humidity, a northwest wind at 26, gusting to 35, putting our wind chill at minus 5. The barometric pressure is now falling at 29.42. Today's high temperature up to 37, well above the average for the date. Low this morning, 24. We're going to go down well below that tonight, probably down in the mid-teens, and a trace of snowfall with those light snow showers that came through at the leading edge of cool air. High temperatures around the Observer Network. Warm spot we could find Bill Bowen out in Delano at 43. Also, Ev Smith down in Bloomington. He had 43. Those were the warm spots. Those are the warmest temperatures we're going to see in about two or three days as that cold front continues to sag southward. We're expecting to see the forecast weather maker for tomorrow. will be that cool front sliding southward, a little bit of light snow to our southwest, high here with sunshine right up around 20. For the northern part of the state tomorrow, we're going to call for sunny skies, but a high temperature only near 10. For
For the southern part of the state, we'll be in the upper teens, lower 20s, mostly sunny skies. And for western Wisconsin, partly cloudy, high temperatures there should be in the 20s. Looking ahead then a little bit further, we do have a 20 degree high for tomorrow afternoon, 20s then for Sunday, into the 30s again for Monday, but back down to the 20s for Tuesday and Wednesday. So kind of a roller coaster in the temperature department, but uh, I wish I could be flying up to Calgary. It is going to be beautiful up you there. You bet. No minus signs around here either. Yeah. Thank you yep. very much. Up next, we're going to return to Calgary for more of the most comprehensive local coverage anywhere of the Winter Olympics. Yep, tonight Mark Curtis fills us in on a rebounding effort. Yay, my Team USA. That's all coming up. Normally we'd buy a 30 second TV spot to tell you about lasso herbicide, like how you get excellent grass control in just one pass and save a trip across your fields. But since we're giving you this $2 a gallon rebate on bulk lasso, we had to cut this commercial short. Good night, hon. Why is it that after a couple of years, Good night, hon. your mattress sags and sags? Good night, hon. Because it's not a beauty rest. Our unique barrel-shaped coils of high-carbon steel are pre-compressed to eliminate sag, to give you a firm, comfortable mattress that can't sag, so that your beauty rest night, will stay as firm as the day night, you hon. bought it. Beauty Rest by Simmons. Forever firm. A free bed frame is available with the purchase of a beauty rest set this week at Gabbard's. You are America's winners. Right now, Chrysler Corporation and Larry Reed's White Bear Dodge join together to make your down payment on your new Dodge car or truck. It's never been easier to buy a new Dodge. Get a 1988 Daytona with all these options for just $10,695 or $215 a month. Or choose this new Dodge Dakota for just $215 a month. Take your pay. Over 400 new cars, trucks, and vans, all priced for immediate delivery. All you pay is tax and license. We make your down payment now at Larry Reed's White Bear Dodge. Welcome back to Calgary, everyone, via Newstar 5 on a Friday night and a great night for the U.S. hockey team. Yeah, we were talking at the top of the show. The U.S. did basically what they had to do tonight, and that was beat Norway, and in doing so, they kept their hopes for a medal alive, bronze, silver, or gold. We'll pick it up in the second period, game tied at two. Craig Brown will take the shot from the point. Lane McDonald puts home the rebound. That put the U.S. ahead to stay. Now, Corey Millen took it from there. Third period, U.S. up 5-3. Tony Granato gets it to Corey. And he scores his second goal of the game and fifth of these Olympic Games. The U.S. went on to win it 6-3. to three. And afterwards, Rob Lear talked with Rochester's Jim Johansson about the win. And uh, they're a tough team to play. They sit back and they don't take many chances. And, and they basically, I think they try to keep the score close, and that's what they're doing today. A sigh of relief that this one's over because it wasn't easy. Yeah, I think everyone is. Uh, we, we really weren't looking forward to the Germans, but in our minds, we... You know, we knew that the German game is going to be the real telltale, but you have to get by Norway, and hey, every team in this tournament's good. Uh, they wouldn't be here otherwise. And that game against West Germany is coming up this Sunday, and we'll have more on tonight's game coming up for you tomorrow. Egan's Todd Boonstra came in with a pretty realistic attitude about the men's cross-country events. He told us that if he could finish in the top 30, he'd be a happy man. Boonstra went out early this morning on the cross-country course up in Canmore, skied what he thought was a pretty good race, but in the end... It was only good enough for a 53rd place finish. I guess I was running in the 30s, uh, maybe a chance for top 30, 10 to about 12 Ks. And then I started to die. Uh, lost a lot of time in the last two Ks, and then the last K I felt all right. By the way, this was not the only race for Boonstra. He has another race coming up next week. We'll be checking in with him then. Another gal we'll be checking on is Jill Trenery of Minnetonka, who will be making her first quest for the gold next Wednesday. This morning, she left Colorado and boarded a plane for Calgary. As we reported to you exclusively last week, Jill had decided to go back to Colorado Springs after the opening ceremonies because she thought she could get more work done back there. Ask her today, and she thinks she made the right decision. I'm happy finally to be going. I, you know, we were there last weekend for the opening ceremonies, and um, it was exciting. But you know, we didn't, we didn't really practice too much. And now, after being home for a week and skating hard, I feel, you know, I feel that I'm ready to, you know, start competing. You know, it seems like just yesterday the Dan Gladdens of the world were hitting grand slams to lead the Twins to that World Series victory, and now it all begins again. Ed Cairo has more from Orlando. The post World Series training camp, the Twins pitchers and catchers open today is a model of efficiency. It's a plan devised by manager Tom Kelly to smooth and speed the learning process. Tommy runs a pretty tight ship, and the biggest thing what he wants to do, he wants to have quality time in his workouts. But to get the quality time, you have to 
you have to eliminate that downtime of standing around. We, make, we have to make do with the situation and the facilities we have with the two fields here and going across the parking lot to the second field. But it's worked out for us last year and this year well. I think our pitching staff will be just as good as last year, if not better, because hopefully we can improve ourselves uh, uh, down here this spring. And, and uh, I feel that our defense uh, is probably one of the best in the American League. And as long as our guys stay healthy on the field, that's going to help our pitching staff. The pace is slow now, but it picks up rather quickly. Next Friday, the balance of the team reports, and in 14 days, the Twins open the exhibition season at Vero Beach against the Dodgers. Ed Cairo in Orlando, Channel 5 Eyewitness News. As Ed said earlier, tough job, but somebody's got to do it. Little overtime for the Strikers tonight at the Mets Center. Second period against Dallas. Strikers up 3-2. to two. David Byrne will get the goal. Strikers built a 7-3 lead. But the sidekicks came back to tie it and sent it into overtime where it stands now 7-7 in the second overtime. Also tonight, the Gopher hockey team won at Michigan Tech. Peter Hankinson scores here to give Minnesota a 1-0 lead. This game really didn't mean much because the Gophers, as you might know, had already wrapped up the WCHA title, but they won anyway, beating Tech tonight 3-0. Coming up tomorrow, day eight here at the Winter Olympics, we've got the bobsled. We'll have our first look at Willie Galter, the Chicago Bears, and men's speed skating. Another Minnesotan competing here. All that stuff coming up tomorrow. What A busy day. Also, we're going to tell you, uh, Steve Hartman, one of our reporters here, we're going to send him out on the street and see what he can get tra trading Channel 5 pins. Now, he's not going <laughs> to trade pin for pin, but he's going to see what he can get besides pins. It should be interesting. And reporter Catherine Smith is going to tell us what Calgarians do in the wintertime to keep their sanity. They're called leisure centers. Stan leisure and Ruth. They're pretty interesting. Yeah, I understand they have surfing waves, right? Yes, it's true. Yeah. That ought to be interesting. <laughs> great you, job folks. all week. You bet. Thank you very much. We'll see ya. We've got to go, too. See you on a great weekend tomorrow morning at 8 or 9. Bye -bye. You have a great weekend. We haven't missed a morning in seven years. She wants this more than anything in the world. At 3M, we know that dreams, like ideas, won't live without the support of others. So as you watch the 1988 Olympic Games, remember nobody got there alone. 3M, supporting the dream. child's laughter and now you can find it in a health plan everybody wants peace. preferred gold peace from blue cross and blue shield watching KSTP, your Olympic station. Nightline with Ted Koppel will be seen following ABC Sports late night coverage of the 15th Winter Olympic Games. Tonight, details on the scandal threatening the ministry of television evangelist Jimmy Swaggart. The U.S. hockey team has kept their hopes alive for an Olympic medal round spot tonight with a win over Norway. A capacity saddle dome crowd watched as the U.S. team in a must situation defeated Norway 6-3. The final challenge for the medal round, West Germany on Sunday. And Karen Percy has given Canada its first medal of these Olympic Games. Percy raced down the Mount Allen downhill course to take the bronze and just missed by one one hundredth of a second, a silver medal. A tremendous crowd at Mount Allen. And Percy's win set off a wild celebration at the Olympic Plaza. A program that may help reduce both. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. We're collecting urine samples for There's new tests. evidence that Results testing criminals for drug use and forcing abusers to give up drugs can dramatically alter their criminal behavior. That's our story tonight. 
This is ABC News Nightline. Reporting from Washington, Ted Koppel. The National Institute of Justice is a research agency for the U.S. Department of Justice. It has funded a number of test programs around the country which have tried to determine whether there is a strong relationship between drug use and crime. Certain conclusions have been reached, and as the influence of those conclusions spreads, so too will the controversy. Not surprisingly, perhaps, there does appear to be a close correlation between drug use and crime. But does that, should that mean, that the drug user is to be treated differently by our court system than an accused criminal who is drug-free? We begin with this report from Ron Claiborne. Crime and drugs. The connection between the two is... Stations, our next item is a special feed for KMID, KVII, and KBMD running 135. The Texas delegation gathered to express bipartisan support for a referendum on financing the state's super collider proposal, but questioning quickly turned to the Senate passage of an import ban against Iran and whether it would have any effect on the Texas oil industry. The Iranian embargo, I really don't think, will have any particular impact on Texas. As far as actually lifting production in the U.S., it won't do anything. The import ban passed the Senate 98 to nothing, but Speaker Jim Wright wouldn't say whether the move would pass the House. I think we've got to do lots of things that are far more important than singling out any one country from which we deny admittance. Members of Congress concede the import ban would have little economic effect in Iran or the U.S. The ban is more symbolic. The Iranians will most assuredly sell their oil and other goods elsewhere. But it's a matter of principle, and every once in a while, a great nation ought to do something based on principle. That's what that vote was about. It uh, expresses our uh, real strong disagreement with what they're trying to do. But despite their stance on principle, both Texas senators admit the import embargo against Iran won't impact the oil industry of either country. Stu Nagurka, Pro News, Washington. Three. Stu Nagurka, TV 12 Eyewitness News, Washington. Three. Stu Nagurka, Big 2 News, Washington. Three. Stu Nagurka, Big 2 News Update, Washington. Stations, our next item is story number 20. Reggie White, newser on the University of Tennessee, runs 115. <laughs> 